tonight on Q2, funding frustrations. It's really important that a community fund and support the cultural work happening in that community. The Yellowstone Art Museum losing out on $100,000. We'll dive deeper tonight into the reasons why. This is only a fiscal problem. You know, we got to deal with the reality of the place. Plus, tossing the dough. We're just so thrilled and excited to be here. A new pizza place is offering Billings a new slice of pie. We'll introduce you to the Detroit-style pizza. And a trip up into the Friars. There is nothing like this in this area. We go out and about to this hidden gem of a mountain range, providing a unique and breathtaking view from above. Your MTN 530 News starts now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. And good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kagan Harsha. Our top story, the Yellowstone Art Museum will potentially lose out on nearly $100,000 of funding over the next two years. County commissioners making that decision as they deal with rising costs and safety concerns for the city. As our Isabel Sparts reports, it's a move that's left many in the community feeling frustrated. This place needs to be supported. It was a pro yam crowd at this week's county commissioners' meetings. I've seen this in my children and grandchildren and uh, colleagues that I work with, that the yam provides inspiration for creativity that helps fulfill us. The comments come after commissioners propose cutting $100,000 of the YAM's budget share over the next few years, beginning with $46,000 next year. County Commissioner John Oslin says it's due to increased costs of public safety and inflation. They all have a good story to tell. They all produce a lot for the public. We're happy with all of them. This is just, this is only a fiscal problem. You know, we got to deal with the reality of inflation. $800,000 in the county's budget goes towards four local museums. 30% of funding goes towards the Western Heritage Center, 25% to the YAM, 25% to the Yellowstone County Museum, and 12% to Huntley Project Museum, with the remaining to other projects. The YAM will be cut to 15% in two years, with that 10 being spread to the other museums, of which two, the Western Heritage and County Museum, are county-owned and are required to be maintained. The commissioners have no real obligation to fund any private museums. It's something we've historically done. But as the budgets tighten up, uh, we're going to have to take a look at all those discretionary funds and see if they're needed more appropriately in other places. The commissioners have been really clear that a primary focus for them is around public safety and the care for historical buildings here in Yellowstone County. And so we were really talking about how the museum can be a partner in that. YAM Executive Director Jessica Rulli says the lack of funds would impact the museum's ability to fund important programs. Unfortunately, it's it's many of our outreach programs that are much more flexible in terms of our annual budget. I hope that's not the case, um, but, but those are the difficult realities for us. For now, the official decision on the budget hasn't been made, but really hopes the community impact will be enough to sway it in their favor. We know how critically the work we do supports so many other efforts and initiatives, from public safety to historic preservation and cultural opportunities in Billings, and we're proud of the work that we do. In Billings, Isabel Sparts, MTN News. It appears the city of Billings has averted a strike with union workers. The city and the union reaching a tentative agreement on a new contract. That potential deal staves off what was a looming strike after the Teamsters Local 190 Union rejected the city's offer last week. Now at that time, the union pointed to a large disparity between compensation increases for union workers and city administration, saying that was their reason for declining the contract. Approximately 480 city employees are represented by the Teamsters Union. No terms of this new deal have been released just yet, but a union vote finalizing the agreement will happen on July 11th. As Montana's recreational marijuana businesses continue to develop, a state legislative committee is considering some big changes to the rules for adding new businesses. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has a closer look at the proposal. Since the launch of Montana's adult use recreational marijuana system in 2022, the state has put limits on who can enter the market. Now, legislators are looking at possibly extending those limits, but in a much different form. 
At a legislative interim committee meeting earlier this month, lawmakers held an early discussion on a bill that could be proposed for the 2025 session to freeze the number of marijuana dispensaries and other facilities for two years. Since the start of legal sales, Montana's had a moratorium, saying only existing medical marijuana licensees could join the recreational market. But while the number of licensees was limited, those licensees could open additional locations. We're talking about a freeze on all cannabis related business location licensing so no new grows no new kitchens no new storage facilities no new dispensaries are the part that the public's really going to notice pepper peterson president and ceo of the montana cannabis guild says people in the industry understand that many montanans feel there are enough or too many dispensaries we've suggested to local governments for uh, two years or more now that they put a number of restrictions on when where and how dispensaries can open Local governments like Cascade County have looked at ways to add limits, and the city of Missoula is considering pausing new dispensaries. One of the most marijuana-friendly cities in the country has said we've got too many dispensaries. That reverberates through the state legislature. One major difference in this proposal is that it would remove the requirement that licensees had previously been medical marijuana providers, which the industry says will let owners transfer or sell their businesses. The committee also looked at a cleanup bill to make some technical changes to marijuana laws and at a proposed resolution to support the federal Safer Banking Act, which would allow legal marijuana businesses to access banking services. The interim committee is set to take a closer look at these proposals at a meeting later this year. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Today's summer heat bringing strong storms and severe weather to our area. Mainly strong winds here in Billings with those downing some power lines. But other areas saw everything from rain to hail, lightning even worse. For the very latest on the system, let's go to meteorologist Jason Stiff. Oh, what a stormy day from Montana and Wyoming. This cold front continues to race eastward into North Dakota right now. It's actually outracing some of our severe thunderstorm watches and warnings. A very active weather over parts of Prairie County, now pushing on Dawson County thunderstorms around the Glendive area, getting closer to Sydney right now and rapidly moving right toward the North Dakota border. Same thing around Fallon County and Northern Carter County. Some more rain showers and thunderstorms, thankfully not as severe as what was happening further to the west about two hours ago. That's extending all the way down into northeastern parts of Wyoming. We still have some more severe thunderstorm warnings east of Sheridan County. More active weather is coming. I have a complete seven-day forecast with all the changes through the 4th of July coming up. Glacier National Park's iconic Going to the Sun Road opened just three days ago, but travelers there already dealing with a number of headaches. Three separate crashes backed up traffic for more than three hours yesterday, with two of those happening in the middle of the afternoon. One crash occurred halfway between the loop and the west tunnel after a driver hit a rock, swerving to miss another vehicle. Second crash happened right at the park entrance, and a third occurred near the Apgar campground turnoff. That last accident happened when a 70-year-old Texas man fell asleep and drove off the road. A 65-year-old woman was also taken to the hospital following that crash. Well, here's some good news. A new pizza place has set up shop in Billings. Jets is now tossing the dough, bringing Detroit-style pizza to the Magic City. If you've never heard of it, tonight our pizza professor, Charlie Kleps, slices up the difference between Detroit and New York styles and what makes this so unique. All right, we're officially open. With the doors open and the oven on, Jet's Pizza officially started handing out slices Thursday. The crust was really crispy, the pizza had amazing flavor, really gooey cheese. And those first few slices were certainly leaving customers satisfied. I love the thick crust, the pan crust pizzas, they're one of my favorites. Jet's is known for Detroit style pizza as opposed to the typical New York slice. So what's the main difference between New York style pizza and Detroit style pizza? Well, for starters, the cheese goes all the way to the crust, which is also that thick deep dish crust, while the New York style is a little bit thinner and gives space for the thumbs. And of course, the obvious difference is the shape, and there's an interesting reason why. Its claim to fame is that it's a square pizza. And the reason for that, and this is a fun fact, is that being from Detroit, the originator of it took 
the square pans from the car factories. But it's hard from the only style offer. We do have a classic round pizza. We have a thin crust. Uh, we also have a gluten-free and a cauliflower crust as well. But one thing is always the same. Our dough is fresh every single day. That's really what uh, distinguishes us from all the other people. If you didn't know we were a franchise, I think you would say that's a heck of a pizzeria. A new pizza joint, bringing a fresh perspective to Billings. A little bit different style. It's, it's an amazing flavor and just excited for it to be here. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Still to come here on the MTN 530 News on Q2, the creative spirit. Inmates from the Montana Women's Prison are helping to beautify the Billings Library. We'll show you more next. And later, tucked between Carbon and Bighorn counties, the Pryor Mountains are unlike any other mountain range and landscape in Montana. We'll take you on a special tour in just a bit.